gentlemen, and welcome to the loft at Union County Performing Arts Center. Please note the emergency exits to your left and to your right. Photography and video recordings are prohibited. Also, please take a moment to turn off your cell phones. Thank you. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy a fearless production of the original play, A Promise to Your Mother. Mandy, come in. Are we leaving soon? Uh, no. The principal needs me to meet with the new student and his mother. Did you want to take the bus home? No, I'm not taking the bus. I'll just find a classroom and do some work. Okay, wh whatever you want. Yeah, it's fine. Well, I, I can talk for a few minutes before they get here if, if you want. Um, yeah, okay, I guess. Good, come, come sit. Put down that bag of bricks. I know, it weighs like 50 pounds. Don't give me some eyes. You mean scoliosis? <coughs> yeah, that. So put some books into your locker. Don't carry them around all day. Everyone picks on freshmen when they're at their lockers. Well, who's picking on you? Nobody. I don't know, people. But they're, they're picking on you because you're a freshman? Or because, you know? Freshman guidance office. Yes, hi. They're in the main office? That's fine, send them down. I do, I just read them. Well, I don't want that to happen either, ma'am. Okay? Okay, that's fine. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow morning. All right, goodbye. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's fine. Let me get out of oh, here. Oh, whoa, whoa. Pit picking on you, Mandy. You said people were picking on you. You need to report them. No, I'm, I'm not reporting anything. Y you can't ask some people not to talk, Uncle Benny. It's been all over the news. They haven't stopped talking about it for a month. That is irrelevant. Our, our family situation does not give them the right to pick on you. It's none of their business. Are you kidding me? It's everyone's business now. Okay, look, I'm not going to lie to you. This insanity that your father created is just... Why do you always do that? Do what? Call him your father. Because he was your father. Yeah, but he was your brother first, and why does he have to be my bro my father? Why can't he just be your brother? Man, man, none of this is your fault. You need to know that. I'm not believing myself. Okay, good, because you shouldn't. Look, your father, my brother, whatever the hell Malcolm was and whatever he did, it has no bearing on who you are. You're an innocent bystander in all of this, I promise you. I'll do everything that I can to protect you. Your mother would have expected that of me, and I will honor her memory by being here for you. Everyone's so mean. Just try to ignore it. Can't. Does it help to know that the faculty is just as mean to me? They are. Yeah, they are. The principal, too, they... They all want me out of here, and they, they don't even make an effort to do it behind my back. What do they say? It's, it's not important. Just, just know that you are not alone in this. Can we move? And go where? I hate him. I know. I love you. I love you too. Are you mad at me? About what? Alice. Absolutely not. She left you. Yes, yeah, she did. Because of me. No. Because you have to watch me now. That's ridiculous, Mandy. Allison did not leave me because of you, and you know it. She left me because of Malcolm, and because I'm toxic now. I'm not toxic. Okay, let's not lie to each other, Mandy. Must be over. I wish I knew. Just want it all to go away. Yeah, I know. You okay? No, not really. Hey, 
Maybe we should order in something nice for dinner tonight, huh? Be across the hall where you come get behind your job. I promise. <coughs> Hurry up, come on. Quiet for one now. Just tell me to be quiet. Mr. Carpenter? Uh, yes, uh, please come in. Thank you. You must be Derek. I guess. Don't start. I didn't say anything. Then wipe that smirk off your face. Make me. I'm sorry. Uh, don't apologize, no need. Mrs. Minor, it's good to meet you. Oh, it's Ms. And yeah, it's good to meet you too. Thank you for seeing us. Oh, yeah, of course. Derek, I am Mr. Carpenter, guidance counselor for the freshman class. Okay. And? I said don't start! Get off my back. Uh, uh, Derek, you don't want to be here. I can see that. Uh, look, why don't you go across the hall and do your homework while your mother and I talk? Uh, 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 my niece Mandy is over there. Your niece is here? Uh, yeah, she's a freshman too. Okay, Derek, go get settled over there and I will come get you after your mother and I talk. Why should I? Derek, enough! Behave! I said get off my back. Ms. Minor, if I may. Please. Thank you. Derek, look, you're going to find that I am good at my job, and if you let me, I can help you. But my tolerance for behavior like that is very low, especially when it's directed at your mother. So what's it going to be? Do your homework or go home? It's your call. Fine. You win. No, I am not here to win. I'm here to help you. Now, go across the hall. Say hi to Mandy and do your work. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Ms. Minor, please don't apologize. Okay. And please just call me Celia. Well, then in that case, just call me Ben. Why don't we sit? Thank you. Of course. Is it wrong that I liked that? Like what? You putting my pain in the ass son in his place. Yeah, you know, between you and me, no. Look, sometimes that's all that they need, you know, just someone to give it to them straight. Yeah, I try, but he doesn't listen to me. Does he listen to his father? There is no father. Forgive me, may I start over? Please. Thank you. Celia, I, I, I read Derek's file. It was. The missing information. So uh, please tell me if I have this right. Derek is 15, but he's only a freshman because he was held back one year due to uh, behavior issues. Yes. And um, he was expelled from his last two schools due to behavior issues. Yes. But you filed appeals both times. You moved to different school districts, and now Derek has been with us here at Madison High for two weeks. Yes. And have you been told specifically why you and Derek were called in to speak with me today? No, but it doesn't take a genius to figure it out. No. I, I understand that, but did his teachers or the principal provide specifics? No. Um, the principal called me this morning and told me to meet with you after school and that you would tell me what was going on. Yeah, of course she did. Okay, let me start by saying that what I said to Derek uh, before about me being good at my job, it, it's true. Look, I've done this for a long time. Helping kids, that's what I was meant to do. But the conversation that we're going to have, it might be difficult, but the more that you're willing to share, the easier it will be for me to help Derek. But if you feel that I've crossed the line, you let me know, I'll back off. Does that sound fair? Yes. Can I ask you something? Of course. Do you really care about these kids? Yes. Why? Uh, well, I have, uh, I've got personal experience with a, a, a twin brother that caused a lot of problems growing up, and uh, the counselor that my parents sent him to was useless. And nothing that he said or did helped. Eventually, my brother stopped going, and let's just say things did not improve. 
So I made a promise to myself that when I grew up, I was going to try to help as many kids as I could. So here I am. I'm sorry. About what? About what your brother put your family through. I appreciate that, Celia, very much. Uh, let's uh, talk about Derek. Okay. Well, wh why don't I start by reading the two reports so that you understand why you're here. And look, please know that this is a very small and financially challenged school district. If we had all the resources that we truly needed, we would be having this conversation with the principal, representatives from the Board of Ed, possibly the school's attorney. But uh, unfortunately, things run differently around here. That's okay. Just read the reports. Okay. All right. This first one is from Mr. Ianuzo, Derek's English teacher. On Thursday at 10.45 a.m., female student Kathy Paluski disrupted class when she stood at her desk, pointed at male student Derek Minor, and screamed, Gross! He's staring at me and playing with himself under the desk. I immediately stopped teaching and brought both students out to the hallway. Kathy restated what she saw. Derek denied the accusation, claiming that he had just come from gym and he felt sweaty around his privates and was simply adjusting himself. Because I did not observe Derek's behavior firsthand, I let Kathy know that I would make sure that Principal Stratford was informed. I brought both students back into class, moved Derek's seat to the opposite side of the room, class reconvened, and ended without further incident, and that's, that's where it ends. You don't believe him, do you? Uh, Mr. Inuzo. No, Derek. He was probably playing with himself in class. But you haven't spoken to him yet, so how can you say that? Because Derek does not have physical education on Thursdays. Huh. Look, Celia, you, you said it yourself. It, it doesn't take a genius to figure <coughs> this out. Right? I, I read the reports. I'm making an assumption. But yes, of course. I need to talk to Derek to understand what happened. Okay. Okay. Second one now, this is from uh, Mrs. Welbeck. She's one of the cafeteria aides, and she's worked at the school for 34 years. Today at third period lunch, I was at my station by the garbage cans, sitting where I always sit so I can watch the kids and make sure they're all eating their lunch. The student with cerebral palsy, I don't know his name, but he's the one that uses the metal crutches. He was walking to the line to get his food. I saw this other student sitting alone at a table, watching the kid on the crutches come toward him. Then the student at the table took his milk and purposely poured some on the floor to make the poor kid slip and fall. Thank God I saw it. I ran over and stopped the student on the crutches before he got to the puddle. I helped him around the milk so he didn't slip. When I turned back to yell at the boy who poured the milk on the floor, he was already at the door walking out of the cafeteria. I cleaned up the milk so no one else would get hurt. I asked some of the other students what that boy's name was. They said it was Derek Minor. I waited until after all the lunches were done, and then I wrote this report. That's horrible. Why would he do something like that? That's, that's why you're here. Well, are you going to expel him? It's a possibility. But, but it's a decision that, that would be made by many people after many meetings with you and, and Derek and everyone. Yes, I know how it works. <clears throat> Celia, are you, you okay? You look pale. I just, I feel lightheaded. Okay, uh, why don't we take a break? How about a cup of coffee? That would be nice. Hey. Hi. Are you Mr. What's-His-Name's niece? Carpenter? And yeah. Well, he kicked me out. Told me I have to stay with you. Okay, so what do you want from me? 
I don't want anything from you. Good. Good. What did you say? What a dick. Nice mouth. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I sit down? Whatever you want. What's up your ass? Whatever. Why do you have to see my own girl? Because I'm a bad boy. Is that right? A bad boy. I'm a bad girl sometimes. No, you're not. How do you know? I can tell. You can't tell anything. All right. What do you do that's so bad? I'm not telling you. Exactly. Uh, well, I could be if I wanted to. Oh, I'm sure you could be very convincing. I could do. I'm sure. I, I smoke cigarettes. I stand corrected. <coughs> you are a bad, bad girl. Thank you. So, your uncle. He's a good guy? Yeah, he does. Think maybe he'll help me? If you let him. It doesn't matter. My mom hates me. Can you say that? Because it's true. <laughs> you don't know that. And you don't know my mother. So what do you know? You're right, I don't know. Maybe she does hate me. What'd you do? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. So you're a freshman? Yeah. How do you know? <laughs> because my uncle's the freshman counselor. Right. You look older, though. I'm 15. And you're only a freshman. Yep. How come? I got held back. What for? Behavior unbecoming was the official. When? Before. Before when? Before this year. Like in eighth grade? No. When? Fourth grade. Fourth grade, what'd you do? I, uh, shit my pants. <laughs> In fourth grade? Yeah. I made me wear a diaper for a month. That's humiliating. Yeah. But why did they hold you back for that? Well, it wasn't just that. What else did you do? I ate the glue. Like the Elmer's glue? And a lot of it. That could kill you. How do you know? Because it's glue. And? And it's made like horse hooves or something. Well, it still tastes good. You're gross. Yep. You still eat it? Yeah. And is that why you're here to see my uncle? No. Then why? I saw you on the news. Go fuck yourself. Your dad really did that to all those young girls? I said go fuck yourself. He's really dead now. And your mom, too? I'm not talking about this. And that's why you're with your uncle now, isn't it? I'm not here right now. Because the news, you know, they're full of shit. Can't believe a word they say. My room. But that girl's father really did it. Ran him off the road on purpose. I'm safe. Because your dad raped her. I'm safe. And your mom wasn't supposed to be in the car. I'm safe. Did your mom know? Get away from me! Calm down. Don't come near me! Calm down. Don't talk about my mother ever! I said calm down. Leave me alone. Why even here? Why don't you go eat some glue and show all over yourself, you animal? Watch it. Or what? You don't know me. You don't know anything about me. I could be all fucked up just like your father. So watch it. Don't you come near me. Relax. Don't get your panties all bunched up, little girl. Why are you so mean? Long story. Your color's back, you feeling a little better? Yes, thank you. Should we continue? Yes. Okay, and uh, remember that if you feel that I've crossed the line and you're uncomfortable answering any question, just stop me. Ask whatever you want, I have nothing to hide. Okay, uh, why, why don't we start with a few simple questions. Where are you from and where did Derek grow up? I grew up in Wingfield, about four hours south of here, and Derek was born there too. Is your family still there? No, there is no family. What do you mean? I grew up in an orphanage. Oh, okay. Um, Did you graduate from high school? No. You get your GED? No. Oh, th th that's okay. Any interest? I, I could help you with that. You're a kind man, Ben, but no, it's not important to me. I'm sorry to hear you say that. 
I'm not. My time has passed. I just want Derek to have a better life than I did. You're a good mom. I try. You working? I'm a waitress at Cornbread's. Oh, I love it there. Oh, that, that uh, Chipotle cornbread is the die for. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I've had too much of it, apparently. I don't be crazy. You are as fit as a fiddle. I wish. <laughs> uh, maybe next time I go, you'll be working. I'll bring you some extra cornbread. <laughs> that would be nice. Hey, I worked the dinner shift tonight. Maybe my niece and I will stop by. I'd like that. Uh, uh, back to Derek. Uh, Celia, um, a little closer to that uh, line now. Uh, you said before that there is no father. Yes. Was there ever a father? No. And you were young when you had him. Very young. Because you look too young to have a 15-year-old son. I'm 28. Okay. Uh, his uh, biological father, was he your boyfriend? No. Was this planned? No. An accidental pregnancy? It was no accident. Okay, I understand. Did you know him? No. Did they catch him? He was caught. Good. Uh, tell me, uh, how were you able to keep Derek? Well, um, I wasn't at first. They made him go into foster care for a few years. They only let me see him on the weekend, so I had to drop out of school. He was supposed to have a better life than me. It hasn't been easy, has it? I get by. Yeah, but uh, Derek, not so much, huh? My son is a mess. It's not his fault, though. No, it's not yours either. No? Well, then whose fault is it? Is it yours? No, it's no one's fault. Celia, it just is. I can see that you feel guilty. I will take that guilt to my grave. I wish you wouldn't. You're a good man, Ben. Yeah, go on now. I'm a, uh, I'm a work in progress. You did the right thing with your niece. Excuse me? Nothing. Wait, what did you nothing. Just, I didn't what say, did you say anything. Nothing. I didn't say I saw you on the news. I saw what happened. I saw you... Hold Mandy, protecting her from those cameras, from those vultures. No one has ever held me like that. I've never been able to protect Derek like that. I knew that you were a good man, Ben. I moved here for you! You moved here for me? Why? So Derek could go to this school. Why? So he could meet you? But why? Why do you th think? I don't know. Come on, Ben. You asked Derek to do those things to the to the girl and the milk. I, I didn't ask him. What? I told him. You told him? Why? I saw his picture. Derek's. On the news. Uh, whose picture? Malcolm's. Malcolm's, whoa. What does Malcolm have to do with Derek? I recognized those eyes, that arrogant smirk, the way that his lip turned up just enough to say you like that, you little bitch! I saw his picture! 
that I saw you. <clears throat> but, but when? How? You would. He was working construction at my school and I cut class to go to the bathroom so that I could smoke. He followed me and he, he told me not to scream, that he wasn't going to hurt me, he just wanted a cigarette. So I gave him a cigarette and we smoked. He didn't say anything, just stared. And then I told him that I had to leave and he wouldn't let me out. He was a monster, and I'm glad that he's dead, and I'm not sorry that I said that. I know that he was your brother, but he was an animal. The father of the girl that he raped that crashed his car through is your fucking hero in my book. My heart aches for Mandy and, and for her poor mother, but Malcolm got what he deserved, and he died like the pig that he is. I don't feel good. This poor, poor, beautiful child. Well, she's no classic beauty, mind you. She's a plain and sample, but a beauty nonetheless. And blah, blah, blah. Forgive me where all my manners I have gone ahead of myself. Oh, let me uh, rewind so I may henceforth be familiar with y'all. Allow me the honor, or nay the pleasure to introduce myself to you kind but, but judgmental people. Oh, believe me, I have seen that look before. There's no reason to avert your eyes. I can feel your glare, regardless where you stare, because I am acutely aware of the stench in the air, so I shall rise from this chair and begin to share. Don't you just love a good rhyme? The children learn so much from a well-written rhyme. I know I did. So Mother Goose, or Dr. Seuss, or even Shakespeare, he rhymed once or deuce. Uh, Waterloo, uh, Timbuktu, uh, Maya Angelou. Uh, oh, me and you. What to do, what to do, what to do. I, I suppose I probably look like you expected, or maybe a little grimy, but probably close enough to that distorted picture you created in your dirty little mind. I hope my visit just met your satisfaction. Oh, now I will say this, that I am uh, not from the South per se, I'm more of a northerly fella, but there's just something uh, elegant and eerie and haunting about a southern draw. So to help you understand all about Malcolm, today we shall suspend his belief and assume that I am from the south. A southerly at least, a uh, bar you, a uh, uh, bum hunter, a uh, Chattanooga. Uh, that you pick, it makes no difference to me. May I humbly present myself to you, Malcolm Carpenter, at your service. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Especially you. Why well, ain't you, sweetheart? Oh, yes, I am uh, 
acutely aware of the cruel joke that my creator has played on me by adorning me with the ironic name of the label of Malcolm Carpenter. I am no fool. I know my fate, my destiny, and my purpose in life. Malcolm, Maleficent, Malcolm Cantor, oh. Malaroa, the carpenter, the builder, the creator of all things evil in this world. Again, to my brother Yang, the dog, to his light, the Tom, to his Jerry, <laughs> what a Jerry to his Tom, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, Benjamin. My twin brother Benjamin, Benevolent, oh Benefactor, Benvolio, my how you have grown into a fine man, a fine, fine man. Now as for the charges of sexual impropriety that hang like a prickly noose around my callous neck. I can only say this. Guilty as charged. But only for the ones that I was present for. This, this woman here, I do not recall. I can look you right in the eye. I say with certainty that I was not present for this indiscretion that's been laid upon us. Well, that does not mean that I was not uh, present. See, what that means is I was not present. And when, when one is not present, one cannot, and should not, and will not be held accountable for one action. However, if it is uh, proved or, or proven by some means of biological familial, well, then I will Oh, substantiate and corroborate and commiserate as I stand here at the gate to hear my fate that I made her once my mate on that most unfortunate date. And so, the trees, they, they turn green. And in the grass will it turn green. But the trees, they turn green first. Why? They're because of all the foliage spill. And so you see, my faithful friends, we have come to the point in the story where you learn <clears throat> why. Why old Malcolm here was the way I was and is the way I is and forever will be the way I will be throughout eternity. I do believe another rhyme shall do the trick. Oh, it's a, a story of a little boy who went to click, click. There once was an old man named Mad Feet who dwelt in a dwelling close to me, 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 and all the kids in town that call him Old Miss Mac. Mac. Mac, an old boy, did Mr. Mac have a knack, knack, knack for finding just the right uh, boy, 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 to gently mold into his toy, toy, toy. But one day walking home when I was six, six, Six of kicking rocks, throwing sticks, sticks, sticks. Mr. Mac, he called to me. 
He said, Good yearns for his crack, 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 and Mr. Max say, Come sit upon my lap, lap, lap. You look tired, boy, rest this spell and take a nap, nap, nap. His bony fingers brush up and down my arm. Oh, oh, he said, relax, boy, I won't do you no harm, harm, harm. So I close my eyes, 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 and I told myself lies, lies. Lie. And from that day on, there was no going back, back, back. Thanks to good old Mr. Mac, Mac, Mac. <laughs> Perhaps now you find that the people have gained a certain perspective on things. Now I know that this does not excuse my actions. See, I own them all. I suppose even the one that I was not present for. But alas, I must, uh, I must bid you adieu. Oh, my fare thee well, we do lose, my time here is done, uh, goodbye. Well on you song. Your name's Mandy, right? Yep. Is that short for something, like Amanda? What do you care? Just asking. Don't. Said I was sorry. Yeah, but don't talk about things that are none of your business. All right, I won't. My name's Derek, by the way. Is that short for something, like Derek crapped his pants? Hey. Or, or Derek can't stop eating glue? Ha ha. I'm sorry. It's okay. I get it. So, you never have? What? Crapped in my pants? No. Only I do shit like that. I mean, tasty glue. No. No way. Do you want to? No. Because I have a bottle in my bag. You carry your bottle of glue with you? Yeah. I get hungry sometimes. You're weird. You know that? But you like it, right? No. Oh, come on. You know you find me Repulsive. irresistible. You wish. Sorry, Uncle. 
What's his name? Ben. 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 Yeah. Uncle Ben. <laughs> yeah. Uncle Ben. Yeah. Like the rice? No, not like the rice, like the uncle. <coughs> so his name is Uncle Ben? No, his name is not Uncle Ben. I just call him Uncle Ben. Benny. You're an idiot. I bet if we put some blue in Uncle Ben's rice, it would taste good. <laughs> like risotto. Like risotto. This is the stupidest conversation I've ever had. But you're in a better mood now, right? I guess. That's all that matters. It, it, it's from a song. What is it? My name, Andy. It is. Yeah, it's from some piano guy my mom listened to when she was a kid. Well, what's the song about? I'm not sure exactly, but there's this one line in there about how a kiss stops him from shaking. And and I've always liked the idea that a kiss could have that much power, like like one kiss from the right guy could stop me from shaking. Or one kiss from you could maybe save him. <laughs> yeah, maybe that too. Have you ever kissed a guy yet? <laughs> I'm not telling you. That's all right. You don't have to. But it's taking them so long anyway. I thought you just said they were going to talk for a few minutes and I'm going to get you. I did. Because I really screwed up this time. What'd you do? It doesn't matter. They're going to expel me. Again. Again? Three times a charm. Why do you like this? Lack of parental supervision, I've been told. No, seriously, why? You got any cigarettes? Maybe. Can I get one? You told me you did. Maybe. But you can't smoke in here. Why not? Don't be stupid. Fine. Save for later. Thanks. I, uh, never have either. What? Kissed a girl. I mean, a real kiss. You haven't? No. If you're not such a bad boy after all. Maybe. Celia, maybe we should stop. You don't look well again. I'll be okay, Ben. You sure? Yes. You're the first person that I've ever told. Ever? Whole story, at least. Truth. What my brother did to you was inexcusable. Yes. What can I do to help you? Derek. You want me to get Derek? I want you to help Derek. Yeah, of course. Like Mandy. Whatever you need. Whatever Derek needs. It's not about me. Oh, I, of course. I, I meant whatever you need me to do to help you, help Derek. I, I will. I can't help him. Yes, you can. I need you to be there for him, I, Ben. I promise. He has no idea about any of no, this. Of he could not. never know the truth. You have my word. What happens next about those reports? I'll take care of it tomorrow. You can make it all go away. Uh, no, not... Not go away, but I know what to do to make sure he's okay. What will you do? No, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. You promise to look after him? I promise. And if something should happen to me? Like what? I don't know, but if someday something happens to me, if I get sick or die or just okay. disappear... Th that's, that's not going to happen. But if it did, would you make sure that he's safe? Yes. And loved? Why are you talking like this? I'm just tired. Look, these, uh, these people have it out for me here anyway, so what the hell, I, I have an idea. Why don't we all go back to my house, the four of us? I'll cook dinner and we can talk. We won't have to tell Derek everything, but maybe in a safer place, maybe he'll open up. What do you say? Sounds perfect, but I have to work tonight. Well, so take the night off. I need the money.
Okay, here's eighty three dollars. Take the night off. It's too much. For what my brother did to you, it will never be enough. Take it. Please. Thank you. Oh, I have to go to the restaurant, though, and tell my manager in person that I can't work tonight. He'll understand if I tell him in person, but he won't believe me if I do it over the phone. Well, Derek can come home with uh, Mandy and me. If you're, if you're comfortable with that, then you can meet me at my house. Would you do that? Yes. I'll take the kids home. You go talk to your manager and then come over. I may be a while. That's okay, they will help me get dinner started. That'll be first. What's that? A family dinner. It's my address. What will you tell him? That I'm here for him. Uh, that I'll, I'll talk to his teachers and the principal for him. Uh, that I'll, I'll vouch for him for what that's worth. But that it's not a one-way street. Right? He has to make an effort. It'll be tough. But he can do it. Thank you, Ben. Okay. You're sure you want to do this? I think so. Because you don't have to if you don't want to. No, I, I want to. Okay. In your hand. There. Do I lick it? If you want, or dip your finger in and taste it. How do you do it? I just squirt it into my mouth. You do not. No, really, I do. I don't believe you. Oh my god, it's disgusting. No, it's not. Try it. I'm scared. I thought you said you were a bad girl. Fine. Ew, it's tangy. Why is it tangy? It's amazing, right? No, it's disgusting. But good, right? No, it's gross. What do I do? Spit it out. Where? Here. Why'd you make me do that? I didn't make you do anything, Mandy. You asked. Yeah, but you should stop me. Why would I do that? Because my tongue is melting. Is it all gone? I don't know. Stick it out. Disgusting. So how was that? I'd rather eat a cigarette. That's disgusting. That's disgusting? Yeah. No, that'd be like eating candy. Hmm. Candy, huh? Yeah. Wanna try? No. You have some glue in your lip. Get it off, machine. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing, we're just talking. Yeah, just talking. Oh, that didn't look like just talking to me. Well, it was, Mom. Relax. Hey, none of that. You are never allowed to do that again. Just talking, Uncle Benny, I promise. Yeah, Uncle Benny. Derek! Mom? Okay, everyone, just calm down. I'm calm, you calm? Yeah, I'm calm. Mom, you calm? Yes. Mandy? I'm calm. See, Ben, everyone's calm. I'm calm, you're calm, they're calm. We're all calm. Well, let's all just stay calm. Is it my turn now? Do I get to explain how my junk was all sweaty from Jim? What? Nothing. Uh, no, actually, Derek, your mother and I, we have another idea. Oh, really? You have an idea. Derek, I am here to help you. Really? Yes. And why is that? Because I made a promise to your mother. And why would you do that? I have my reasons. You're some kind of pervert. Enough! That is enough out of you. This man is offering you a lifeline out of the kindness of his heart for reasons that you cannot even begin to understand. He is offering to help you, so show some respect and shut your damn mouth! Whew. That felt good. Derek, you're going to come back to my house with Mandy and Why? Why? For dinner. Why? So that we can talk in a more relaxed environment. What about you, Mom? You're not coming? I... Look, your mother needs to go to work. Tell her manager she's taking the night off. Then she will come over, and we will all sit down for dinner. Right? Then we will...
talk about what we all need to do to help you get back on track. Is that right, Mom? Is that the plan? Mm hmm So you're gonna go to work, and then come over to Uncle Ben's. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can we have risotto? I don't think that I have rice. Seriously? Let's pick some up on the way home. Okay, that sounds like a plan. You've got my address. Mm-hmm. I'll see you soon, Ms. Minor. Yeah. Okay, kids, let's grab those bags of bricks and let's get out of here. There. I love you very much. Well, aren't you something? 